Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. This week, I want to show you how to take just two sizes of bead, a size 11 and a size 8, and I want to show you how to make a three-dimensional starfish pendant. This pendant is so much fun, and it's pretty quick to make. You're going to need three yards of, you can either use a six-pound fire line. I'm going to be using the 1G thread today. You will need about two grams of a size 8 seed bead. Um, those are going to be, your size 8 seed bead is going to be the arms, what I call the arms of your starfish. So on this one, it's the cream color. On this one, it's the orangey coral color. You're also going to need a size 11 seed bead. So on the size 11 seed bead, this one is the pink and this one is the sea foam, um, topaz sea foam lined. So that's the only beads that you need is just those two sizes of seed beads to make these really fun pendants. So go ahead, thread your needle with about a yard and a half of your thread and then we'll get started. So to get started, I'm going to use my size 8 seed beads, and I'm going to pick up 5. I'm going to let those drop down, leave just a little bit of a tail, and go back through all 5 again, going from the tail upward. And go ahead and tie these beads into a loose circle. The very first one I ever made of these, I did not tie it. I just tried to keep going with what I had. Um, and yeah, that didn't work out too well. Because when it, when it got tight with the herringbone, um, it did not work out. The thread kept trying to pull out and it just didn't look good. So be sure and tie this a couple of times into a loose circle. And then once you get that done, you're going to take your needle and go through one of the size eights next to the knot. It doesn't matter whether you go to the right or to the left, but whichever direction you start, you have to continue in that direction. You want to pick up an eight and go through the next eight. And that eight is going to pop out like this. Then pick up an eight and go through the next eight. an eight and go through the next one and you're going to do this all the way around so you'll be adding five eights so if it helps you you can always take and lay out five beads and then you'll know you're to the end of the row so if you look right here I'm adding my last bead for the row so I'm going to go through the last bead but then I'm going to step up step up by going through the first bead that you added in this round. So I'm actually going to go through two beads here. Go ahead and pull that. So now, this is what I've got. For the next row, you're going to be picking up two eights and going through the next eight sticking up. So you're basically, right now, you're doing a variation of peyote stitch and herringbone stitch. And then the bail is going to be brick stitch. So you're going to be doing three different stitches in this one pendant. You're just picking up two eights and going through the next eight, sticking up all the way around. So you'll actually be adding ten beads on this round. So again, if you wanted to, you could count out ten beads and you would know when you got back to the beginning. So this here is the last bead for the round. So I'm going to go through this bead. And then I'm going to step up by going through the first bead that I added in that very first set of two. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this little tail off so I can get it out of my way. We're going to do herringbone, so I'm going to pick up two eights. And I'm going to go down through the very next size eight seed bead. Then pick up one eleven and go through the next eight of my pair. So I'm skipping this lower uh, lower eight and I'm going to go up through the next eight. So I picked up an eleven, went through the eight that was sticking up. Pick up two eights, go down through the very next eight, 
I'm going to turn it just a little bit and pick up an 11. Skip the lower 8 and go through the next 8. So I'm going through the 8s that are sticking up. Two eights. Go down through the very next eight. And then pick up an eleven and go through the next eight that's sticking up. I'm going to go a little quicker here so I can get to the next round. But you're going to do this all the way around. So if you wanted to, you could count out your 8s and you could count out your 11s. So that way you'll know when you get back to the beginning. You'll be adding a total of 5 11s on this round. So I'm picking up my 11. The last bead for the round is actually going to be the middle bead. It's going to be this bead right here. But I've got to step up to the next round, the round I just finished. So I'm going to go up through the top two beads of that round. This way I'm finishing the row and I'm stepping up all at one time so that this is what it should look like when you get that step complete. Now we will pick up two eights, go down through the very next eight, pick up an eleven, go through the eleven that you added, and then pick up an eleven and go through the next eight, the top eight there of that little row so that that's what you'll have. Then again it's two eights. Go down through the next eight. And then pick up an eleven. Go through the eleven. Pick up an eleven. And go through the eight. And we're going to do this all the way around. And remember, when we get back here, I'll show you how to do the step up. I've gone all the way around, adding my 8s and my 11s. I've picked up my last 11, and I complete the row by going through this size 8 seed bead. And I'm going to step up by going through the first bead of the row that I just added. So again, I'm going up through the top two beads to step up. So that way, now I can start for the, the next row. row. We're going to do just like we've been doing. We're going to pick up two eights, go down through the very next eight, pick up an eleven, and go through the first eleven sticking up, pick up an eleven, and go through the next 11 sticking up. And then pick up an 11 and go through the top 8 of the next little stack. So if you don't see it yet, if you haven't figured it out, the first row we put on 1 11. The second row we put on 2 11s. This third row we're putting on 3 11s. So again, it's two eights and go down through the next eight. Then we're going to pick up an eleven, go through the next eleven sticking up, pick up an eleven, go through the next eleven sticking up, and pick up an eleven and go through the top eight. And we're going to do that till we get back around to the beginning and this is where we're going to have to step up through the top two beads of that so stack. As you can see, I'm back around to the top of the stack where I'm fixing to do my step up. So I picked up my last eleven and I'm going to go through the top two eights 
of the first stack here that I started with. And sometimes you'll have to wiggle it in place, but there you go. So you pull that on through. Now we're ready to do the next row. And again, we're doing another increase here in the center. So I'm going to pick up two eights and go down through the next eight. Then I'm going to pick up an 11 and go through the next 11. Pick up an 11. Go through the next 11 that's sticking up. Pick up an 11. Go through the next 11 that's sticking up. And then pick up an 11 and go through the top eight. So that now we've added one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna work around this entire row, finishing up this row where we're adding four 11s, and then you'll do the next row where, you'll, where you will be adding the five All right, 11s. So this is what your piece will look like after you finish the fourth and the fifth row. So if I get it up close here, you can see we've added five 11s on that last row. So we're going to finish up this last row. So to do that, we are going to pick up one eight instead of two. We're only picking up one. And you're going down through the next eight. That's going to make a little point. Then we're going to go along adding our 11. So we'll pick up an 11 and go through the 11 sticking up. Pick up an 11, go through the 11 sticking up, so that we'll be adding six 11s all the way around. Now sometimes in the center here, it gets tight trying to get those beads in, but they'll pop into place and work out fine. So you go across and finish up this whole piece putting the 1-8 at the point and then the 6 11s. And then you're going to tie the thread off and completely finish this piece. Then you want to start another piece and you're going to continue until you do five rows. So you wouldn't do this last row of the one bead and the six here. Okay, so finish this one out completely and then start another completely new piece doing the five rows like we've done here but do not do the so six now row. I have my one complete piece that's tied off and then I have my second piece that is the five rows with my thread still attached at this point we want to put both the pieces together and we want to line up the arms of the starfish on each piece so right now, my thread is going to be coming out of an 8-0 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put the piece together just like this. And I'm going to go through the one 8 on the left-hand side. That's the one that's sticking up. Then I'm going to go down through, or actually up through, however you can see it looking here. I'm going to go through the next 8 on the right-hand side. This is going to connect the top, or the, that arm, I should say. Now I'm going to turn it to the side here, and we're going to be zipping up just like a peyote stitch. So I'm coming out of the right-hand side, so I'm going to come to the 11 sticking up on the left-hand side. Pull that through. Go through the 11 O sticking up on the right hand side. Pull that. And as you work, keep a taut tension. You're going from right to left, left to right. Each time, just going through the next 11 O that's sticking up. And when you pull it and you get it pulled tight and you're all the way around, you're not actually going to be able to tell where you started and where you stopped, just like in regular peyote stitch. So you can see, after each one I go through, I'm pulling it tight.
That's the biggest downfall is getting it stuck on the arms that you've already completed. So I'm finished connecting the 11 O's. So now that I have those connected, I'm going to come up through that top 8 O on the right hand side, through the 8 O on the left hand side, that's just the single one there at the top, and then through the next 8 O on the right hand side. So you're going to continue all the way around connecting your sides. Now, one quick thing, or one quick suggestion, is <clears throat> on these starfish, my three-dimensional starfish is completely, he's not, well, I guess it's, yeah, it's flat, but I mean, there's a little bit of volume to it. If you don't want it completely flat, before you finish up your last connection, so I would keep going all the way around, and before I finish this last connection up, you can stuff something clear, like cut off a plastic, some plastic off a plastic bag, like a sandwich bag, and you can stuff it down in there. Your biggest thing is you have to be careful what you put inside of here because you can see the holes. You can see the hole in the center, and then you can see the hole in the arms. So you want to be careful if you do stick stuff in them like you can see it a lot better on this one because you're going to be able to see what you put in there it's a pretty substantial pendant in itself so that's why I personally don't put anything in mine but that's always a suggestion so you continue to work all the way around zipping up just like I zipped this part up right here and then when you get back around to the beginning you want to be coming out of the one bead here on the arm so of I've your gone starfish around and connected the whole star starfish and it's looking pretty awesome I'm loving this minty green and turquoise so now I'm gonna do the bell you can do the bell however you want to okay total perfect oh, okay that didn't turn out right total personal preference there we go man say that six times fast what I like to do is I came up with this really simple brick stitch bail, and I think it's really cute. I just think it adds something to it. If you don't like it, don't do it. It's completely up to you. I mean, you can make a loop of seed beads for all I care, but I really, really like this one bail, so I'm going to show you how to do it. We're only going to be using the size 11 seed beads, and I'm going to pick up two 11s. Let me flip this thing because I like to work this way. I'm going to go back through the same size 8 seed bead that I'm coming out of so that it makes a circle. Take the needle, go up through the size 11 that you just added, down through the second one, and I'm going to put my fingers on there so it won't pull down, and then I'm going to go back through the 8 again. And then back up through that first 11. This is going to reinforce it a little bit, but it's also going to make my little beads sit exactly like I need them. So what we're going to work on first is increasing peyote or increasing brick stitch. Each row is going to increase by one bead. So here's how we do it. <clears throat> I've got two 11s. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go under the thread bridge between those two 11s that are already there. I'm not going through a bead, I'm going under the little thread, which is called my thread bridge. I'm going to pull the beads and I'm going to go up through the second bead that I added, which is this one right here. Okay, the second one that I just added. Pull that. And then I'm going to do my increase. So I'm going to pick up one bead and I'm going to go under that same thread bridge that I just went under, pull that thread and go up through the bead that I just added. So the first row had two 11s. The second row has three 11s. I'm going to work back in the other direction. So I'm going to pick up two 11s and I'm going to go under the first thread bridge. Pull your thread, make your beads sit side by side, and go up through the second 11 that you added, which is this one right here. 
I'm going to put my fingers on it and I'm going to pull that thread so it'll keep it nice and taut. 111, <clears throat> excuse me, go up through the next thread, un under the next thread bridge. Up through the bead that you just added. Now I've got to do the increase, so I'm going to pick up one bead. I'm going to go under the same thread bridge that I just went under. And then I'm going to go up through the bead that I just added. I'm going to hold that in place. Pull it. And now that row has four beads. I'm going to do one more row here so because I'm pretty sure you're getting the gist by now. Pick up two beads and go under that first thread bridge. Go up through the second bead. Thread on 111. Go under the next thread bridge. Go up through the bead you just added. 111, go under the next thread bridge. Up through the bead just added. And then 111, and I'm going to go under the same thread bridge that I went on to add that last 11. And then go up through your bead. So with each increase, I had a row with two, a row with three, a row with four, now a row with five. So you're going to do a row of six, a row of seven, a row with eight, and a row with nine. So you'll have nine rows here, and that last row will have nine Once beads. Once you get up to the ninth row with your nine beads, then you're ready to decrease. And before I go any further, I know I'm going to go ahead and say this because somebody's going to try and correct me and say, no, you only have eight rows. No, you have nine rows because I'm considering this one bead here as row one. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So, Yes, there are nine rows. Now, we're ready for a decrease. You've increased all the way up to the nine beads. Now, the decrease. Decrease means we're going to pick up two 11s. With the increase, we went under the first thread bridge. With the decrease, we're going to go under the second thread bridge. Pull the thread and then go up through the second bead just like you normally do. The only problem with that is if I get this up close here, you can see that the beads sit wonky and they don't sit perfectly straight like these do. So you have to fix that. And we fix that by going down through the first bead and then up through the second bead again. So we're not actually going under a thread bridge. We're just going down and then back up so that it straightens up our cute little beads. At this point, we just pick up one bead, go under the next thread bridge, and up through the bead. Pick up a bead, go under the thread bridge, up through the next bead there. And I'm going to work this all the way down my row. Just picking up my bead and going through the bead that I'm adding. So I'm to my last bead on the row. I'm fixing to pick that up. And when I pick that up, I go under my last thread bridge just like I normally do. With the increase, we picked up an extra bead and went under that same thread bridge. With the decrease, we don't do that. We stop when we go under that last thread bridge. That's as far as you can go. You're ready to go to the next row, so we pick up two 11s. And remember, on the decrease, we don't go under the first thread. We go under the second thread, up through the bead, the second bead there. And then since your two beads sit wonky and not pretty like we want them to, we have to go down through the first bead and then up through the second bead again. And I'm going to put my finger there and I'm going to pull that thread so that it makes them pretty and straight like we want them to be. And then it just goes on to picking up an 11, going under the next thread bridge, and then through the bead. 
we do that on every row decreasing until we get back down to two beads on a row. all the way down to two beads on the bail and right now it just looks like a really weird extension to our starfish but I'm going to show you how stinking cute this is going to be so we're going to fold it over you can either fold it frontward or backwards it doesn't matter whichever way and when you fold it be careful because if you are a super tight stitcher, you might actually break and bust your thread. So just be careful and not do this super, super tight up here at the top. That's one of the reasons I love this 1G thread because it's uh, enabled me to really do some good stuff with the thread. Alright, so I'm coming out of my bead here on the right. I'm going to go through the size 8 seed bead. That's my row 1 that I was talking about. And then I'm going to go down through this seed bead on the left and pull that tight. And when you pull that tight, that now makes a seamless start from where I started and finished. Only thing is, you're going to have to reinforce that a couple of times, okay? So I'm going up through that, that 11 on the right through the size 8 seed bead and through the 11 on the left. I'm going to do that several times pulling that nice and tight and you can see right now the bell kind of looks a little funky. So all I have to do to fix that is I can take any circular round object and I can put it in there and that will help to um, straighten it up the way that it needs to be and give you that really nice look there. So once I finish this part here I'm going to go ahead and tie this So off. here you can see the completed starfish. It's really really fun I have really enjoyed making these starfish the great thing about it is you can make this bale as big as you need it to be you know you can go up further um, 10 11 12 rows and then just decrease to make the bale bigger um, you can put it on anything as long as it will fit through the hole here or the bale that you have made we will have kits on our website for all three colors that you see here, which is the turquoise and the mint green, the pink with the orange or salmon color, and then the um, topaz sea foam with this creamy color. So you can find all three of those on our website, plus... Um, lots more of size 8 and size 11 seed beads where you can come up with so your I own colors. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make this three-dimensional starfish. I know that other people have made these. This is just my interpretation of it. Um, so, you know, these are things, shaped beadwork that's been done for a while. But like I said, I hope you enjoy it. We do have the pattern for sale on our website, which is off the beadedpathbeadstore.com, as well as the three color kits that you've seen today. Day. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.